We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Sioux City, Iowa. It's a privilege to get to visit with Shane Ledegi, who is heading into his fourth season as the lead man of the program, the head football coach for the Briar Cliff Chargers. Coach, I mentioned it is a privilege to get to visit with you again. And last season, I'd like you to talk about that just a little bit. Four and seven on the year, an improvement on the year before. And one of the things I noticed about last year, and I actually remember it from the, the season itself, uh, no back-to-back wins, but the wins that you were getting, three of the four wins, one possession games. And I'd like your take on that in the season as a whole. It seemed like you won the games that, that you needed to win. Yeah, well, first off, Joey, thanks for having me again. This is awesome. I uh, I catch myself watching your your interviews with other coaches throughout the off season. So, well, thank you. I think this is great for NAI football. But yeah, it was uh, an interesting year last year. Um, really started off slow. Um, really was not thrilled with <laughs> the way we kicked off our season. Um, and then it kind of found our stride, like you said. We uh, finally got a win under our belt um, against Hastings at home, which was really incredible environment. It was our first home game, night game. Uh, we had brand new black uniforms. We had a blackout. So it was like a really cool environment for our entire university. And to come out and hit a, a and win that game late um, was kind of critical that I thought jumpstart kind of the back half of our year, especially when we kind of had to play the three juggernauts of our league um, down the stretch there too. But like you mentioned, we're able to win some games like I felt like we could. Um, and we felt like, I think our guys felt like we should. Um, and did that with playing three quarterbacks, really four quarterbacks, um, you know, with some injuries, you know, our returning starter, Luke Davies, that had, has kind of been our guy since I got here. Uh, we really made a change just to see if we could kind of jumpstart our season a little bit and kind of get out of a rut. Um, then we went with Johnny Bowser, um, and he did some good things. Um, we've actually moved him over to the defensive side of the ball now. Um, he's going to play DB kind of hybrid safety role for us, and I think be really good there. Um, then we had uh, Gavin Dobson came in and played. He was a transfer for us, did some good things, got hurt. Um, then we went with Brock Saya in that uh, Hastings game and led us to a victory and did some really great things and kind of took that spot over. Um, and then towards the end of the year, he got hurt, and he tore his ACL. And um, so we went back to Gavin a little bit. He got banged up again, and we ended up back with Luke. Um, who, who did some really good things, led us to a victory against Jamestown, uh, threw three touchdowns in the second half to win that game. Um, so we are in a super unique quarterback battle. Uh, we had a great spring with those guys, and we're really going to leave that job open early in fall camp and um, see who can win that thing for us. Is it a situation – let me stay with that for just a second because I had a couple of questions. One with with uh, Bowser, is that one of those situations where you just – you know, you've got somebody that's talented. You, you need to have him on the field in some capacity. Yeah, absolutely. He's a he's a great athlete. You know, his probably – his biggest attribute to us at offensive quarterback was his ability to use his legs. Um, and we just felt like with who we had returning at that spot and where we maybe had a hole on defense um, – with his toughness, with his leadership, with his natural athletic ability, that his best bet to help us win football games and for him to have success was to go over to defense. And he jumped at that opportunity. Um, he's a total team guy. Whatever we can do to win, Coach, I'll do. And uh, so we went with it, and he had a great spring over there. And I'm, I'm excited to, to just see him continue to play a lot more football for us. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to, to following him as well on, on that side of the ball. By the way, I did. I really liked the black uniforms. I thought they were sharp. <laughs> so I, that, that, that's great you mentioned that. In, in talking about those four quarterbacks, one of the thing about it in the spring, uh, signing 25 on, on signing day, but also, I mean, you, you picked up another couple of quarterbacks as, as mid-year transfers as well, too. And, and uh, it does look like, I like the way you said it, a unique quarterback battle. I mean, it's, it's going through the spring and I'm sure heading into the fall as well. Yeah. So picking up, you know, Judd Roberts uh, for Graceland as a mid-year transfer, big kid, really live arm, um, as talented as an arm as I've seen at this level um, in small college football. And, and he's going to have a shot, you know, for him. It's all about picking up the offense mentally and, and understanding protections. And we, we motion shift trade like crazy. And, you know, when you're first coming in, that can be a really daunting kind of feel for you at quarterback. So as he gained experience um, throughout spring and we really threw him in the fire, he got a lot better. And um, 
you know, he's here all summer. All our quarterbacks are here all summer. So really giving them an opportunity to train and be around the guys is huge. But he's he's definitely part of that battle, too. Um, and it is, I've never been a part of anything like it, you know, where you really feel like you got a whole room full of guys that can help you win. And how do you balance that and how do you find that guy? Um, you know, but the good part, I think, is we're we're a lot more balanced as a roster now. So I think we're going to be able to do more in fall camp in terms of how many reps we're getting, how much we go live. Um, that I think is really going to give those an opportunity, those guys an opportunity to, you know, to see who rises to the top. Because, you know, as much as you can go out and roll eleven on eleven at practice and controlled team settings and seven on seven, you know, you really got to roll the ball out live and put them in game like situations. And we're finally, I think, at a, a spot, excuse me, within our roster that we can do that more. And so we're going to really roll the ball out live and get us in a lot more situations early because we really got about a two-week window to, to decide who that guy's going to be, you know, going into game one. Well, it's, it's a, a roster, too, that looks to have more depth. I think you may have more depth now as a, as a team yep. uh, than at any other point in, in your tenure there heading into your fourth season. Another player on offense, and talk to a little bit more about the offense as a whole. Matthew Mason comes back. Had a solid freshman season as a redshirt freshman, and and uh, was able to take care of business when he got the ball in his hands. Uh, Corey Kerrigan coming back for you as well in the receiver spot. Tell us a little bit more about the offense. Yeah, you know, starting with Matt, really excited to get him back for another year. Just super dynamic athlete, really smart. Can we can motion him out, play him at receiver. We keep him in the backfield. He can handle a lot. He can run between the tackles. He can get out on the perimeter. Um, you know, so we're excited to see how we can continue to expand. I think as our offensive line and tight end groups gotten better, that's going to really obviously help him. Um, cause we've seen when we've been able to handle fronts and, and hand him the ball 20, 25 times a game that he produces for us. Um, and we're going to go quite frankly, as he goes, you know, we have to be able to run the ball in this league. And so if we can get him rolling early, I feel really good about our chances. Um, then you mentioned Corey, um, I think one of the more dynamic kids in our league. <laughs> I've been around Corey a long time. I recruited and coached him at Minot State. And then uh, after a year here, I he went in the portal and we got him down here. And um, the thing with him is every time he, he touches the ball, you're giving him a chance to go the distance. And so finding as many unique and creative ways to get him the ball in space, putting him outside, putting him in the slot, lining him up in the backfield, using him in the screen game. Um, he's really allowed us to do a, a heck of a lot and I'm excited to see him one more year. Um, and I think the guy a lot of people forget about is Stephen Whiting at tight end. Um, I've done a poor job probably as a coach of getting him the ball early in the year. It always seems like about the last six games, <laughs> we finally get him going. And that's shockingly the, when we started winning some games down the stretch. But, you know, he's all a 6'6". He's about 230 pounds now. He runs like a receiver. We can put him anywhere. Um, you'll probably see him flexed out a little bit more at times this year. Um, but man, he made some clutch plays down the stretch for us. Those those four games we won, you could pull up the film and Stephen Whiting is making a play in those one possession games that's helping us win. And so I look forward to finding a lot more ways to get him touches. Um, and he's gonna be the other critical piece, I think, to us taking the next step is, is finding ways to utilize him um, to be successful. And, the fun part is we bring back our entire offensive line. And I think we've added some pieces there in competition that's going to help because that group's played a lot of football now. Um, they've developed a lot this offseason. Uh, we hired a new strength coach that's been really good for us. And I think that group is really going to take off. And we're going to need them to because um, you don't line up against Dort, Morningside, Northwestern, Midland, and and not be good up front and have a chance to win. So I'm, I'm excited to see that group flourish too. I always enjoy talking about the offensive line. And, and especially when you are bringing back that kind of experience. We're visiting with Shane Ledeggi for Briar Cliff here on the Summit on Midwest Sports Net as we preview the 24 college football season. Coach, on the defensive side of the ball, I mean, we would be remiss if we didn't mention MJ Montgomery, I guess at least to start off, although he won't be a part of the roster this season, but what a career he had and All-American, not only as a defensive end, but – uh, you know, he he was a long snapper, too. I mean, one of those uh, utility players like you're talking about, some athletes on this team. Tulsa Janish coming back, and we mentioned Bowser going to the other side of the ball. So tell us a little bit about this defense. Yeah, you know, we losing MJ is, you know, he's been a staple of Briarcliff even before I got here. So those are some tough shoes to fill, but I'm excited about some of the guys that played alongside him up front. 
Um, but you mentioned Tulsa, I think, as good of a corner as we have in our league. Um, super athletic, uh, really good track runner for us as well here. Um, ultra competitive. You know, we got here as a receiver and we moved him over. Um, and he really jumped at that opportunity and has really just taken off. Um, but you really feel like in a lot of games, you can cut off that half of the field with him over there. And mm -hmm. we play a lot of man coverage type principles. Um, and he really opens us, opens up Billy for us to do a lot. Um, you know, and then at D line, uh, Goy Tip was a freshman for us last year, really good pass rusher, long, athletic, can really run. Um, really looking for him to kind of fill some of those shoes that MJ's left behind. Um, and then Carlos Lopez on the interior and Lakey Martin on the interior. Um, really good years for us last year. Great team players, awesome students, tough, physical, run well. Um, really, I think you saw a big improvement in us defensively um, because of that group up front. And we turn, we turn to our more productive guys, the linebacker. You know, Brett Tinker was out this last fall with a knee injury. You know, two years ago, he led the G Pack in tackles. Um, so we're excited to get his production back, his leadership, toughness, smarts, uh, just a great leader. And then Braden Pomier Williams returns with him, who had a great fall and a really good offseason. Um, it kind of exemplifies the type of attributes you want in a linebacker, just his toughness and his mentality. Um, not going to say a lot, but he speaks with his pads, and and I've enjoyed having him here. Um, and we got some holes to fill in the back end. You know, Zach Buick's gone, um, who had a really productive year for us in terms of PBUs and picks. I joked with him if if he caught the ball better, he might have led the country in interceptions last year. <laughs> but man, he came up with some plays when we needed them. Um, so filling his shoes will be critical. We got a couple of young guys there that I think will step up and. Um, you know, like probably a lot of small schools, we're still working on a couple transfers here late that I think can come in and help us. So um, that'll be an interesting crew back there. But I'm, I'm really excited about the group up front we have that I think can help um, maybe take care of some of that inexperience we'll have on the back end. Jacob Myers was your kicker last year as a freshman. Actually came in, really took the, the job a little bit more his own. Yeah. Midway through the month of September and, and into the season somewhat, but he's back for this season as well. Tell us a little bit about special teams. I know that's a, a part of the game that's special to you. Yeah, you know, uh, Jake was a true freshman last year, local kid, big leg, um, lack confidence. You know, I think as we got through the year and he gained some more confidence and, and understood how much we as coaches and his teammates believed in him, started really doing some good things. Um, incredible work ethic, a position that sometimes gets unnoticed. Um, just the daily work he put in this offseason is doing now, um, I think will allow him to take a big step forward. And, you know, the guy you hope you don't put on the field a lot is our punter, Christian Mendoza, was an all-conference punter for us. Um, I joke with him, hopefully we use him very sparingly this fall, but um, is a huge weapon and just the ability to, to flip the field. Um, and put our defense in some good situations on making teams go take the long way home. And um, so we're excited to get him back another year. And, um, you know, Corey Kerrigan, like we talked about on offense, he's also an incredible returner. Um, if you can actually, there's a viral clip from him at Minot. Uh, he has a 109 yard kick return for his touchdown, his true freshman year against Minnesota Duluth. Um, it's kind of funny. That's actually the first time he touched the ball in a college football game. Um, yeah, he had me in a panic and, and made a play. So, um, but he has that type of big play um, opportunities on our special teams unit as well. So something I think we spend a lot of time on. Coach Martin, um, our special teams coordinator, has really done a great job. And for us, as we build this program up and hopefully take that next step, you know, that's a that's a third of the game that you really got to win. You know, when you talk about these one possession games, those special teams plays, those are critical moments um, in terms of winning football games and building a winning program. Well, Coach, it gets underway a little bit less than two months from now, August 31st. And last season you started with three games on the road, so you think maybe it's going to flip this year. No, not so much. Three games on the road again, and you get an, you get an added game too. You get an 11th game on the schedule, and I think that's pretty nice. Out-of-conference game taking on St. Ambrose. And uh, I don't know, is it is it possible to travel any farther from one side of the state to the other? Uh, from Sioux City all the way over to Davenport. I've actually been to Davenport and uh, been there, been on the college campus over there at St. Ambrose. My goal is to also get to come to St. Sioux City as well and, and see what you all have to offer there. But that's how you get things started on the road 
at St. Ambrose and then uh, on the road at Doan and then on the road at Hastings before you finally come home on September 21st. By the way, that first game of the season, a night game too. Yep. So, yeah, it's been a whirlwind of scheduling games. You know, you had Jamestown leaving the league um, and then Waldorf joining. So, Waldorf's always been our non-con game. So, yeah, you lost that as a non-con. Then Jamestown leaves. So, we we really scrambled to, to find a game and Honestly, the best way we could do it was agreeing to one more road game to, to start the year out there. But um, I think it's really good to find a, a non-conference game that's still in state. Yeah, um, I think that's Fairly. it's important for recruiting. I think it's important for families to get to games. Um, you know, the beauty of it is uh, in 25, it really flips our schedule. We got a lot more home games that year. So um, it ends up working out, but it'll be an interesting start. Never played St. Ambrose. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they do. And then Doan's a whole new staff. So we go back to back weeks there with some a little bit of unknown. Um, but it's a really good start. Re- three, I think, really good games on our schedule to start the year that'll be competitive. And, um, you know, as I've got to know Doan coaches a little bit, I think they'll be a really quality coach uh, team as well. So, um, well, some tough tests early. Um, but I think it's also where we're at in our program. I think it's, going to tell us a lot about where we're at, you know, and I think I like getting on the road. I like hopping on the bus with the guys, staying in the hotel. I think it's building some of that team unity and bonding early. Um, will hopefully pay dividends when we get to that back half of the year too. All right. Again, it gets started August 31st and that's going to be all the way to the other side of the state, but uh, it'll be a fun trip. I'm sure for the Briar Cliff Chargers coach Shane Ledegi. Thank you, sir, for taking time with us today, previewing the 2024 college football season. We're going to follow the Chargers. We'll follow you as well. And and we do appreciate having you here on Midwest Sportsnet. Thanks, Joey. Again, can't thank you enough for what you're doing for NAI Athletics.